Good evening. Welcome to the Herndon Town Council Public Session, September 12, 2017. Good evening, everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Prior to tonight's meeting, we had a reception and swearing-in ceremony for uh, town manager, for, uh, Phil Ashton, our new town manager. We've officially welcomed him this evening, and we thank all of you who were able to attend. And I would also like to thank staff for putting this together. It was a lot of work, and we definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, we have several approvals um, of, of sets of minutes. I'll ask for separate motions um, to approve each set. Is there a motion to approve the August 2nd work session minutes? So moved. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the August 8th public hearing minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. And finally, is there a motion for the to approve the September 5th work session minutes? So moved. I'll second that. Discussion on the motion. Ms. Yes, Olin. Madam Mayor, I sent in some uh, corrections did, that did not get added. I have um, resent oh. them because I got confirmation that they had been updated, but they're not on comments that I made in the work session. Uh, okay, have those uh, corrections been, been updated with the clerk's office? Do you know? We can always hold off on this vote if we need to make an addition. I do not know at this time, but we will look at them tomorrow morning. But they haven't been corrected in tonight's what's in here, but I did send the email last week. I got confirmation, but they're not correct. Okay, why don't we um, hold off on this vote okay. and we will do those, um, the approval at the next public hearing so we can sort that out. So we will um, abandon that vote. Thank you. Okay, thank you for clarifying, Ms. Olam. Uh, we have several presentations this evening. The first one is a proclamation to recognize Virginia Bicyclist and Pedestrian Awareness Month, September 2017, and I'll recognize the Vice Mayor to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A Town of Herndon proclamation recognizing Virginia Bicyclist and Pedestrian Awareness Month, September 2017. In 2015, uh, 15 bicyclists and 78 pedestrians were killed in crashes with motor vehicles in Virginia. To combat these tragic statistics, hundreds of partners, including towns, cities, counties, businesses, organizations, schools, and sporting groups from across the state are teaming up with Drive Smart Virginia, Bike Virginia, the Virginia Highway Safety Office at the Division of Motor Vehicles, and other like-minded organizations to raise awareness about the importance of sharing the road in order to reduce the number of crashes and injuries. During the month of September, the public awareness campaign known as Virginia Bicyclist and Pedestrian Awareness Month encourages bicyclists, pedestrians, and motorists to work together with this year's theme, See and Be Seen, to find solutions to reduce roadway injuries and fatalities while promoting safety, respect, and cooperation. Therefore, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Herndon Virginia hereby Proclaim September 2017 as Virginia Bicyclist and Pedestrian Awareness Month in the town of Herndon. Recognize that bicyclists, motorists, and pedestrians all have mutual rights and responsibilities when traveling on the roadways of Virginia. Emphasize the importance of safety for all individuals traveling on the roadways. And promote bicycling and walking as healthy, efficient, and sustainable forms of transportation. Be it further resolved that the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby express support for the Herndon Police Department, Herndon Police Citizen Support Team, and the town's pedestrian and bicycle advisory committee in their efforts to make our roads, trails, and paths safer, and remind pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists to be safe, aware, and to share the road. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, comments from the council on this one? Ms. Sure. Weisner. So I was selected to read this because I am the chair of PBAC, which is the Pedestrian Bicyclist uh, Advisory Committee. Um, and really our key focus, which is a, a collaboration of both uh, citizens, residents that are, that are members, including some I see in the audience tonight, as well as staff and police, all come together in this committee. And our key focus is 
really how do we get cyclists and walkers safely around town and specifically safely to our future metro site is one of the key areas of focus. So it's really developing those, those safe routes and those partnerships. Um, I also want to recognize we have Green Lizard in the audience as well. So the, uh, one of the owners of Green Lizard who is, uh, owns our bike shop in town, which is right on the W and OD trail and a really key both community gathering spot and just member to, that also promotes key bicycle safety. Um, they do a weekly ride and as someone that's gone on that weekly ride, I know before that ride and what they always talk to the bikers about in that shop is to be safe, to look out for for um, you know motorists and really share the road and share the WNOD trail, which I know is very popular with cyclists. Also certainly want to acknowledge our Herndon cops who of course patrol both on bicycles and in, in their cars and motorcycles to promote safety. They've looked at places where the WOD crosses major roads and how do we make those more safe, um, you know, adding lights when that was necessary. Um, and really, in, in addition to um, the citizen support team that's mentioned, right, which is that group of volunteers that also patrols on bikes and really helps to keep those modes of transportation as safe as possible. Um, and as someone who just bought a house on the W and OD trail um, and is a avid walker and sort of avid biker, I'm getting there, but a very avid walker, um, I can tell you that really a, a walkable and bikeable community is, is really a popular community, right? That's the kind of place that people wanna live. As we see you know, new developments and things happening in town, folks want that walkability and, and just accessibility where they can get to places without having to get in their cars. So I just think this is critical and certainly with the partnership of, and making sure it's safe is, is also key. So i um, very happy to be, uh, to just acknowledge that and all the community groups and our, particularly our police that help keep us safe. Thank you. Thank you, other comments, uh, Ms. Olam. I am so excited to support this once again. Um, and I see that uh, the person on the PBAC committee that has been instrumental in working with Department of Public Works, Ms. Jo Adams, mm -hmm. and helping with our audible lights uh, around town. Those are very important. Uh, you see them in larger cities and with us getting to be so walkable, it's great that we're uh, going to those uh, extent to make people safe. And I'm also happy to see people that are walking their dogs are now putting those little blinky lights on that I like <laughs> to use when I walk. Even when I walk around to my neighbors so that people can see you, people are now putting them on their dogs so that you can see because the dog's in front of you. And I've seen them several times when I'm coming home on Spring Street and you see this, you know, dog in the outline as the light keeps blinking on and off. It's kind of cute. So be safe walking and riding your bikes. Thank you. Other comments? Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I uh, um, am also very delighted to support this. I live off Ferndale Avenue and uh, where Ferndale Avenue and Washington and, and the W and OD trail meet, um, there are frequently ambulances called to that area. And so um, I am keenly aware of the danger of not paying attention of, of just um, running lights, running uh, stop signs, um, be as safe as you can. And um, I'm so grateful to Green Lizard for their uh, focus on safety and um, knowledge of your bicycle. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, I, I concur with my colleagues, and one of the things that has been really important to this council and previous councils is making sure that Herndon is a safe place to walk and bike, and uh, it's been mentioned the metro and is coming, the downtown redevelopment is um, just about to be underway, and connecting those and making you uh, making it possible to get from one to the other without getting in your car is really key. Um, HPD, I'm sure, will tell us more about this, but I know they are doing a safety campaign um, for cyclists uh, starting right now. I've seen some of the signs around town, so we're excited to promote this, and uh, I would like to um, indict down for the presentation of the entire council, town manager, town attorney, uh, members of the PBAC committee that are here, Chief DeBoard, um, Sergeant Galpin is here, and any other members of HPD or the Herndon Politi Pol Police Citizen Supports team that would like to join us for the presentation. And Green Lizard, you can come too if you like. <laughs> That's what happens when you show up at a meeting. <laughs>
Greetings, Madam Mayor, Town Council. Uh, thank you for having us here tonight for this. Um, as you know, the town of Herndon and surrounding areas have thousands of bicyclists and pedestrians uh, who enjoy, as you said, walking, uh, running, biking, and recreation, exercising, community work. Uh, and it's important for all of us to promote the Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Awareness Campaign uh, to keep our trails and roadways uh, safe and to reduce the number of unnecessary accidents. Uh, and the goal of the Herndon Police this year and department is, is, and other local agencies across Virginia is to change motor pedestrian and bicycle behavior uh, to reduce the number of fatalities and crashes with injury. Um, and some of the ways we can do uh, reduce these accidents are by educating our drivers, um, pedestrians and bicyclists about the safe uses of our roadways um, and also increasing enforcement efforts, uh, pedestrian bicycle traffic safety laws and making our drivers and pedestrians and cyclists aware of these enforcement actions. Um, by increasing these efforts and with everyone's help, we hope to promote the importance of bicycle and pedestrian safety uh, by making our streets, trails, and safer for everyone. So thank you. Appreciate your support. Thank you for being here. Yep. Uh, next up is a proclamation to recognize Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, September 15th through October 15th, 2017. And I'll recognize Council Member Friedrichs to read the proclamation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Town of Herndon Proclamation recognizing Hispanic Heritage Month, September 15th through October 15th, 2017. Since 1968, Hispanic Heritage Month has been celebrated from September 15th through October 15th. There are many definitions of Hispanic and experts have yet to come to an exact agreement. Generally, Hispanic is a Spanish-speaking person or person of Latin American or Spanish ancestry, or in some definitions, to ancient Roman Hispania, which roughly comprised the Iberian Peninsula, including the contemporary states of Andorra, Portugal, and Spain, and the Crown Colony or British Overseas Territories of Gibraltar. Today, organizations in the United States use the term broadly to refer to persons with historical and cultural relationship either to Spain or with Spain and Portugal, regardless of race. Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua, uh, gained their independence from Spain on September 15th, 1821, and Chile gained independence on September 18th, 1821. Mexico's Independence Day is different from that of the other nations. On September 16th, 1810, the Grito de Do Dolores, the Cry of Dolores, was declared by Father Man uh, Miguel Hidalgo, beginning the Mexican War of Independence. <laughs> September 16th, 2017 marks 270 years 207 years of Mexican independence from Spanish rule. Therefore, the town and uh, the mayor and the town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim September 15th through October 15th, 2017, as Hispanic Heritage Month in the town of Herndon, and recognize that Americans of Hispanic and Latin heritage have a positive influence on our community through many fields, including business law, politics, education, community service, the arts, sciences, and as members of our armed forces. Further, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby encourage all residents to learn more about the history of Americans of Hispanic and Latin heritage, to observe this month with appropriate programs and activities celebrating these diverse cultures, and highlight that this is also an opportune time to celebrate the heritage of people from other Spanish-speaking countries throughout the Americas, Europe, and Africa. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, comments from the council? Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I was uh, really delighted to have the opportunity to read this proclamation recognizing the history and contribution of um, our fellow citizens uh, and residents of Hispanic heritage. Um, the population of Herndon as of 2010 was over 33% Hispanic. So our friends and our neighbors and our colleagues are all contributing to our community. And I'm delighted that our town of Herndon is a welcoming and open place for all to be recognized and, and to enjoy living, working, and playing here. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments from council? Ms. Olin. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I too am very happy that we're uh, recognizing this. Again, uh, I was fortunate enough my senior year in college to do my student teaching in Mexico City, Mexico, and I was there for their um, Fourth of July, and it was some party indeed. But I became, you know, it, I really had a fondness for the people of Mexico. I thoroughly enjoy going there, and that was part of the reason when we were looking at Herndon 
and I went into several of the stores and they had things in English and Spanish and it reminded me of my time in Mexico City when I knew some Spanish but couldn't read everything and everything was English and Spanish and it made me feel very welcome so I'm glad that we do that here in Herndon as well thank you thank you um, mr. McKenna yeah this is um, something I anytime you have diversity and, and, and uh, cherish it and celebrate it it's a wonderful thing and um, you know I think about all the um, sacrifices that the community has made especially you know in the military you see a lot of um, you know Hispanic soldiers and um, in fact on Friday I was at the uh, Nats game for Roberto Clemente night and uh, Roberto Clemente uh, was not only a, a fantastic baseball player but an amazing humanitarian who uh, lost his life flying to Nicaragua to help those who uh, were devastated by an earthquake at that time um, so um, to see the amount of people that were there for that game and in um, for the uh, Roberto Clemente evening and uh, to have this proclamation to show the pride I think is a wonderful thing and uh, glad to be part of it thank you other comments mr. Davidson thank you madam mayor um, it's that time of year in the HOA uh, calendar where we get ready for the annual meeting um, and that means sending out a notice to all the different owners in my HOA um, this year we were able to uh, find Spanish-speaking residents who helped us translate the English version of the notice into Spanish and I know the town does that when it's, when it's reasonable to do that so I'm happy to um, be able to um, look at the diversity of our town I know in my, my small little HOA I have at least six different cultures uh, represented it's very diverse now the next thing that I'll have to do is translate it into Russian which is going to be even a little bit more difficult but um, we're happy to celebrate diversity in Herndon and this is just one of the ways that we do it thank you sir any other comments uh, I agree one of the uh, wonderful things about raising my family here in Herndon is the diverse cultures that they're exposed to and we're um, happy to work every day to make Herndon a hometown for everyone and this proclamation um, of welcoming and celebrating our Latino and Hispanic neighbors um, is a joy to be a part of so I appreciate the council's support of this um, for the presentation I will invite forward the entire council uh, town manager town attorney um, I think we have representatives here from the Dulles Regional Chamber of Commerce um, and uh, Nuri Mena, the co-chair of Hispanic Business Council Committee. Oh, I see you back there. All right. Um, and uh, oh, I lost my place. Uh, Val Kaiser is an officer on the board of directors for the chamber. Um, any other uh, members um, of the audience that would like to come forward um, representing any of these groups, we would love to have you. I know, right? <laughs> That's right. Good evening, everyone. It's always great to uh, recognize significance. And I, um, as a child of a naval officer, I moved around our country and also had the opportunity to live in Italy and uh, Germany. 
And I remember as a child living in San Diego, and that was my first exposure to watching television in Spanish and, you know, seeing some different things. And as I grew up, I just came to accept that there's many different wonderful cultures and many different uh, neighbors, because literally I moved almost every single year. There were only a couple of times when I was in the same school for two years. And so I love living here in our greater metropolitan area. Since I came in 71, I've seen such a, you know, a surge and many different types of peoples coming here to live and work and play together. And I'm, I'm very happy to be part of the Herndon community. My office is across the street. And uh, my children went to uh, Loudoun County Elementary School where 55 different languages were represented there. And so I look upon this as just wonderful opportunity to expand and open our minds. And when we look back over our shoulders, you know, there have been some challenges in our history, whether local, nationally, as we try to, you know, adopt and adapt to one another. But when I look back over my shoulder, over my lifetime, and it's been a while, y'all, I just see so many positive changes. Just even since my older kids and my younger kids, you know, from a 40-year-old to a 19-year-old, you know, we, we just have so much uh, opportunity in our country to keep growing because, I mean, it's our diversity, it's all of the immigration that has really kept us strong, our economy strong, our ideals strong, because we always have to really reassess and recognize that as we, as we think about, it makes us think about what we're doing and how we can change, maybe resistant a little bit at first, but it's all for the good. And I'm very happy to be here tonight representing the Dulles Chamber, and we look forward to the Hispanic Committee Party. They, they always have the best party every year. <laughs> y'all, have y'all ever come for that? Okay, that is the best party, the best event that we have each year at the Chamber. And thank you again, and I, I appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, our, I think this is our last proclamation of the evening, um, is to recognize POW MIA Recognition Day, which is September 15th, 2017, and I'll recognize Councilmember McKenna to read the proclamation, sir. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate that. A Town of Herndon proclamation recognizing POW MIA Recognition Day, September 15th, 2017. For many years, the American Legion supported the observance of National POW MIA Recognition Day, which, with the Legion's support, was first recognized at a national level July 18, 1979. That first year, Congress passed a resolution and the national cer ceremony was held at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Every year following POW MIA Recognition Day, legislation was introduced until 1985 when the President began to issue a proclamation honoring this, this important day each year on the third Friday in September. POW MIA Recognition uh, Day honors the commitment and sacrifices made by our nation's prisoners of war and those who are still missing in action and their families. On this commemorative day, we pay tribute to the service men and women who have not returned home from past conflicts, stand beside families and their loved ones, and honor those who have been held captive as prisoners of war. We remain focused on America's responsibility to achieve the fullest possible accounting of the missing members of our armed forces and to bring them home. Therefore, in recognition of these brave Americans, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim Friday, September 15, 2017, as POW, POW MIA Recognition Day in the Town of Herndon, offer full support to all members of the United States Armed Forces who defend American lives and liberties unwaver with unwavering devotion. Further, the Mayor and Town Council of the Town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby proclaim that the Town of Herndon shall annually observe the third Friday of each September as POW MIA Recognition Day and encourage citizens to acknowledge this day of honor and remembrance through the display of POW MIA flags and with appropriate ceremonies and activities. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, comments on the proclamation? Yeah, yes, I, I, um, this is an important day to me because I had several uncles serve in World War II and um, two didn't come back. and. There was one gentleman who was the commander of the VFW in my hometown, 5479. His name was Dick Graham. And my parents had a store, and he always came in. He was, a, you know, 
took a liking to me. He was just an amazing man. And he fought in Korea, and um, he took me to, I saw the Vietnam War Memorial when it first was there when I was like seven years old. And, um, you know, I, he was just an amazing person. And I realized he was, um, a, he was a prisoner of war in the Korean War for some time. And he was, uh, he was in the store one day, and a car backfired outside, and he hit the ground. And that was the first time I realized in my life, um, you know, I heard stories about my uncle, but I saw what war can do to somebody. And it's um, a person like that shouldn't have to go through something like that. And I know there's members of the military here tonight, and there's not enough we can do to thank you. And the people especially that are, you know, we don't have any uh, recount for them. We have to stay vigilant on that. Um, we have a thing, there's a thing rolling thunder and a lot of people, you know, the, the, the bikes going into town, um, very ceremonial, but people some don't, don't, don't realize the purpose of that is the sound of the bikes is to remind Washington that there's still people out there that have not been accounted for and we have to be vigilant about that. Um, so I really appreciate the council getting behind this and uh, from the bottom of my heart, it means a lot, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Other comments from council? Ms. Cunningham. I want to echo um, Councilmember McKenna's remarks. Over 1,600 Americans still remain unaccounted for from our last three wars. That's 1,600 families that will not find closure at Arlington National Cemetery. That is 1,600 children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren who don't have those stories that Bill was able to share with us. So um, take a moment to think about those 1,600 families and their descendants. Um, and uh, do take a moment sometime this fall to go by Arlington National Cemetery. Um, I'll call your attention to an event that the Herndon Women's Club will be um, rolling out shortly, and that's Wreaths Across America. For $15, you can buy a wreath to honor a veteran both in our hometown cemetery as well as at Arlington. Um, and so for those families who, who have loved ones buried there, they have closure. But take a moment to think about those 1,606 missing American service members. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Ms. Olam. I always remember in 1996 that there was a farmer in England that was out in his field and he saw something shiny. And that something shiny was the dog tag of a World War II pilot that had gone down that had never been found, MIA, for all those years. And when they had the funeral and interviewed the man's daughter, who was two at the time he disappeared, she talked about how she always knew her father would come walking in that door. And it's a pain that never goes away because that was two years after my husband disappeared, not in the service, but he's never been found. And all I could think is, oh my God, are my kids gonna have to grow up like this? So if you know someone who lost someone as an MIA or they were a POW, it is something that never goes away. And we do owe a debt of service uh, gratitude to those service members that serve for us. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Well, this is um, one of the few proclamations that without fail we recognize every year at this time, and um, I concur with my colleagues. Uh, we do have uh, Commander Dave Womack from the American Legion, uh, Kidwell Post 184. We're thankful that you're here this evening to. Uh, to accept the proclamation, we'd like to invite you forward along with uh, the mayor and council, town manager, town attorney, anyone else who is in the audience who served in the armed forces or is a member of the American Legion, we welcome you forward and then we'd love to hear from you um, after the presentation.
I just want to take a minute and thank the council uh, for what you're doing here today. I'm Steve Munt, uh, retired from the Army after 32 years as a, a general officer. But I think whether it's the Army, the Air Force, the Marines, the Navy, the Coast Guard, um, Merchant Marine, all of those folks serve and they all live by one, one kind of code uh, when we deploy and when we go into harm's way. And we don't do it for glory. We don't do it for recognition or anything else. We do it because of the people that we love and because of values and freedoms that we were talking about tonight and many of the other proclamations. But the one value that we never forget is we will never forget and we will never leave somebody behind. And those 1,600 people uh, that, that Councilmember Cunningham was talking about are people that we can't account for. But we will never break faith with them and we will continue to search for them. And that's why today we still actively seek the remains or the, 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 the people, if we'd rather find the people, but in many cases we're finding remains, even from the Second World War, from Korea, we have very active uh, efforts in the Pacific and a lot going on now in uh, Southeast Asia as well. So thank you very much for what you've done. I appreciate it. And I know those that serve with me do. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Commander. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I have no formal prepared remarks, but I do want to say a few words. First of all, it's hard to pass up a general officer who does such a good job. So I <laughs> thank you, sir, very much. Uh, 32 years, I only got 22 in. So uh, obviously, I got a long ways to go on stuff like that. Thank you for remembering POW MIA Day. Um, this is something that a lot of towns don't seem to do, but ours does. We are a town of veterans. You can go around the corner at the Home Depot and find all the bumper stickers and the tags on the back of cars of these guys and gals that are here, that have served, that are part of our community, the fabric of our community. And we at the American Legion thank you for that. Uh, POWMIAs are something that we remember at every meeting. Uh, we set out a place for that missing man or woman. Um, it is important to us. Uh, we do the business of the day, but in the back of our minds, we know that what echoes from the past is that missing man or woman in our formation. Your support is key and you all have shown it over time and we do thank you so much about that. Um, these uh, missing people, uh, the missing veterans, these missing warriors, uh, the POWs, they're amongst us, the, the POWs are. You spoke about the gentleman from the VFW that you grew up with. I, I can talk about a man who was six feet six tall, Mr. Coles Goodner, who owned Goodner's Variety Store, my first job. Come to find out he was a navigator for a B-20, I'm going to get the aircraft wrong because I'm an Army guy, but in World War II, <laughs> B-17, there you go, somebody shouted it out, um, who for 18 months was in a, a, a German POW camp and um, very calm and he, I knew him for decades and I never knew it till right at the end. Um, but uh, taking a moment today really means a lot to the post, to the town, and to all of us, so I say thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, do you have any comments for us this evening? I certainly do, Madam Mayor. I just want to thank the council for the kind reception upstairs earlier this evening. On behalf of my family, they thank you as well. I want to say a special thanks to Vicki Weller's house, who is an event coordinator extraordinaire. <laughs> she did a phenomenal job. And Margie Tachi, who spearheaded this setup, even though I came in at the 11th hour and tried to rearrange things, she kind of shooed me out back to my office. That's what she does. <laughs> yeah, she does very well. <laughs> and the staff at DPW. Um, those folks, the hardworking folks at DPW that come in, do the setup, the tear down, the cleanup, they, every day, I'm amazed by the phenomenal job they do. And uh, so I thank everybody on behalf of my family. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Davidson, do you have any comments for us? No comments this evening. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McKenna. Just a few. Um, the Herndon Youth Advisory Council, uh, we made our final selection, so, um, if you're watching on television, uh, look for the email uh, shortly. Um, so I want to thank everyone for um, applying to that. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be middle school and high school kids uh, that will be uh, giving us their input in regards to what's going on in town. So uh, I, I can't wait for that because they'll definitely give me what needs to be said. So uh, there'll be no filter and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, the other things I want to say is uh, uh, Margie, I know you're spending your 30th anniversary with us today. So uh, I want to thank you for uh, <laughs> There's no place she'd yeah. rather be than just right here. 
A and she has a wedding coming up too, so the fact she's able to keep all this under control just speaks volumes to the kind of person you are. So thank you very much. Uh, and finally, uh, Fallon, good to have you back, my friend. I know you've had um, some things and just know that we were hoping and praying for you, so it's good to see you back in the, I call that the opera chair. So uh, well, <laughs> really appreciate you uh, coming back and good to see you uh, up and at them. So good to see you. Good curve, thank you. Ms. Cunningham. Thank you. I want to um, offer congratulations to everyone who was on the Homes Tour this past Sunday, the Garden Tour. And uh, I know a council member, Friedrich's Garden, was on there, and I know what a, a tremendous amount of work. So if you haven't had a chance to participate, the town holds uh, a Homes Tour in December and a Garden Tour in the spring or fall. It's a wonderful event. Um, so I want to thank everybody who volunteered to be on that. Uh, also, I want to call your attention to third Thursday. Next Thursday, the 21st, will be um, third Thursday of the month. The arts groups in Hernan put on a really great outdoor event. So please come on by. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Friedrichs. Well, Ms. Cunningham said all the things I was going to say, so I concur <laughs> with Ms. Cunningham, and um, I have nothing. Thank you. Ms. Olam. Thank you. And the garden tour was great, and your yard was even just awesome, but they all were. Um, September 23rd, if you enjoy the airplane pool, it's coming up at the Dulles Airport. Uh, if you don't know how to find out about it, just... You can ping me or email the clerk, and she'll uh, get you to me, and I can get you the details. Um, also, on Saturday night, before she had the garden tour, uh, Ms. Fredrickson, a uh, council member, and I and a couple of my friends went to see the play Disgraced uh, by Next Stop Theater. It's an excellent play. Uh, see one of my buddies out there that went with us, and uh, it's a great play. Great, uh, great night out, but it's very thought-provoking. You might want to try it. And it's very, um, with this being Hispanic Heritage Month, it fits right in because it's talking about diversity. So you might want to check that out and try it. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Sure. So there is so much going on in the month of September. So be between now and our next public hearing, just a few things uh, additional to mention in addition to what the council has already talked about. So this Saturday, um, there is the native plant sale at Runnymede, and also on Sunday the 24th, go back to Runnymede for Nature Fest. So we're really lucky to have a 38-acre park. 58. 58, sorry, I said 58-acre park in our town. Um, it's sort of our central park, right? So please take advantage of that and those two events they have coming up. Um, September 23rd, Herndon High School is hosting their showcase of bands, mm -hmm. so it's where marching bands from all around the, um, the area, uh, I was going to say Fairfax County, but it's bigger than that, I believe, mm -hmm. um, come to Herndon High School. We, we host it every year, um, so that's all day. If you like to see marching bands, it's fun, so go check that out. Um, it's basically like 11 to 10 o'clock at night, all day on the 23rd. Um, as um, Ms. Ola mentioned about Disgraced and what the, the great plays and things that Next Stop Theater has going on, they also have their, um, they're going to be selling a lot of their costumes on mm -hmm. September 30th, that morning from 7 to 11. I hate to even tell anyone because I I'm totally want to be first in line, but <laughs> I should tell people about it because <laughs> it, it is going to be cool. I need costumes for some things, so that's, um, that's going to be held at Art Space. Um, also want to say thank you to the Rotary Club for hosting the Classic Car Show this past weekend. So that was on Sunday. I thought that was great. And Mayor, the weather was beautiful, so I took credit. You always blame me when the weather's terrible, I but I, I took credit because it was a gorgeous day. Um, <laughs> let's see. And then I also want to talk about, so on this Friday is uh, the third Jambrew. Mm -hmm. Um, if you haven't yet been to Jambrew, so for all of you, because you know I talk about Friday Night Live, which is a blast, but um, the Herndon Hospitality Committee uh, has organized this uh, event, Jambrew, for the past seven years, and it has really hit its stride. I mean, it's a fun, cool event. It's got a great vibe. It's got great vendors. They're very particular about having local vendors, yep. including Aslan is their exclusive beer yep. uh, provider. Um, great bands. I mean, I just highly recommend that you check out Jambrew. It's every Friday night through September, and it ends on the last Saturday of the month, September 30th. It's an all-day October brew fest. Um, all day on Saturday, so there's tons going on, um, and let's see, I think I think I had all the main things I wanted to hit, that was a plenty, okay, wow. that's it, thank you, lots going on. Um, I wanted to let you guys know that uh, the Parks and Recreation Department is really focusing on organizing a lot of fun family events, and for, we were, there was supposed to be a cupcake 
ride and it was canceled due to weather they're working on um, rescheduling that who doesn't love a cupcake ride um, but if you there's several other events so if you fin visit the town's website um, for the list of events um, it's under family there's family fun and fitness fest on September 23rd so there's something for everybody um, also I see a bunch of our downtown business owners in in town here or in the um, chambers tonight Aslan is having their second anniversary party this coming it's this weekend right yep. yeah on the 16th uh, Formerly O'Sullivan, Sully's Poorhouse closed up for a week, did a bunch of remodeling. I've heard it looks great, so they're um, up and running again. Uh, the brick sidewalks are out in downtown. The beer garden at Jimmy's looks great. The Breeze, if you want to watch the Redskins or any other team, I guess. Um, <laughs> Phil would be happy to host you over there. So um, if you're looking for something to do um, after all of these great events, head to one of our downtown restaurants for sure. Um, that brings us to the comments from the audience portion of the agenda. This is the portion uh, reserved for people to speak on any item that's not listed under the public hearing um, titles on the agenda. This does include the consent agenda or general items or anything else that's on your mind that you'd like to bring to the council. You have up to three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. And when the red light comes on, please wrap up. Um, Mr. Murphy, fancy meeting you here. Madam Mayor, uh, members of town council, Shane Murphy with the law firm Reed Smith, 7900 Tyson's One Place in Tyson's, Virginia. Uh, here tonight to talk about uh, the zoning ordinance text amendment 17-02, which is, uh, deals with, uh, we think primarily the, the, the planning district, uh, the PDTOC district uh, in the metro area. We're a little bit concerned about this, which we didn't know about before this week, that there were gonna be some, what we think are pretty major changes to the PDTOC ordinance that was just approved uh, not even four years ago. Um, I have a client within the PDTOC that is almost done with a site plan. Um, the changes in this ordinance, if the site plan is not approved quickly, would actually impact that site plan. It would turn that site plan from buy right into a development plan required uh, plan. And so we think that the changes here are pretty, uh, pretty severe. Um, there's two other speakers that will speak to a couple of other uh, aspects of this that concern their clients. I think between the three of us, we represent about 90% of the landowners in the, in the, the Herndon uh, transit-oriented core. Um, the concerns we have uh, in, in among my clients primarily are about use. Um, when, when we started the, the PDTOC district, uh, it the, all of the restrictions were based on the, the type of density. There were a lot of buy right uses as there are in typically in a lot of urban areas. Um, and the, primarily the restriction was if you could go up to a 0.7 FAR buy right as you could prior to the PDTOC. If you wanted to go from a 0.7 to a 1.2, you went the special exception route. Anything above that required a development plan with proffers. Um, I know that there's one other developer who also uh, has a representative here tonight who is actually going for a full development plan. Um, I think they have some different concerns. But primarily I think our concern is um, the requirement that many of these uses will now have to go back through a development plan amendment or a development plan in order to be approved. As an example, if a landowner has a development plan approved um, and that development plan does not show a retailer or restaurant use on it uh, and they want to switch from a retailer to a restaurant, they would have to go back through the Planning Commission and Town Council as we read this uh, to be able to have that use approved. So we think there's, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty that this is going to inject into the metro area at the very time when you've got a lot of landowners and a lot of folks who are either thinking about or are bringing forward applications. Um, you know, authorizing this text amendment, in our opinion, at this point in time, without having discussions with all the stakeholders, not, you know, just, not just the landowners, but um, you know, the town citizens and, and all of the folks who are involved over there, uh, we think it have a pretty chilling effect on what we thought was a pretty staid uh, am amendment. So with that, I see my red light is on. I will uh, yield my time to the next speaker. I do appreciate uh, your time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Uh, my name is Mike Kitchen with Christopher Consultants, and I'm here speaking as a representative of the folks from Penzance, Lerner Corporation, and also HF Water Dragon. Um, uh, as Mr. Murphy had mentioned, you know, there's a number of concerns that are with proposed within the uh, zoning text uh, change related to the PDOT, PDTOC <laughs> that, uh, that could have uh, considerable impact to these property owners, um, specifically the folks from Penzance. Um, they have a development application in the, proce in the process right now being looked at by town staff. And the proposed increase in the buffer between the toll road and any proposed structures on the site, uh, it's, it's increasing from 40 to 80 feet. 
uh, is going to have a sizable effect on their ability to develop the property in the manner in which it was intended while the PDTOC was being created. Um, and then more generally, there's the uh, changes that are proposed to the uses and just a, a lot of questions that are out there that um, all three property owners have concerns with. Um, and <coughs> the process that was used to create the PDTOC um, was a very involved process, including property owners, other stakeholders, working with staff, planning commission, the town council. And it was a very well thought out and a, a process that I think everybody thought went very well. And so we would just encourage uh, staff and council to consider going through that process again and bringing those folks back in just to, so that they can be considering exactly, you know, everything that's, that this could affect is, can, uh, is taken into consideration before the change is made. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Amanda Williams, an attorney with Cooley here tonight to similarly speak on item number 16 on your consent agenda, agenda a zoning ordinance text amendment proposing changes to the PDTOC zoning district. Our firm represents several property owners within the Herndon Transit Oriented Core area whose property is currently governed by this zoning ordinance. Uh, you received a letter earlier this afternoon from Mark Looney of our office that lays out our specific concerns regarding the potential adverse impacts of the proposed changes to the PDTOC district regulations associated with this zoning ordinance text amendment. I won't reiterate all of those points here and Shane covered our concerns um, related to the permitted uses and the changes associated with that. But I did want to come in person tonight to reiterate um, that we strongly urge the town council to defer action tonight on this initiating resolution to allow time for more dialogue with the affected property owners and stakeholders in the area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who'd like to come forward and speak on any item that's not listed as public hearing item? Yes, sir. Steve Munt, 814 uh, Locust Street. I wanted to come in tonight and just, I know you're brand new, but <laughs> here, here's what you got to hear. Lenny and his crew this morning from your public works uh, had to come over and do some work near our property uh, on the corner of Locust. And, you know, we've, we've gone through the temporary fire station and mm -hmm. the lot and everything else, and um, we can talk about that. But the, the real issue is, is Lenny came in yesterday, came by the house, said, hey, we're going to do this tomorrow. This is what's going to happen. Here's when it's going to happen. I'll come over and let you know. Did that. That's the kind of professional service that, that the town of Herndon stands for, and we really appreciated that this morning because we knew when the water was coming off and we knew when the water was coming back on. And that's yeah. a big thing when you're living in a house. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. We, they, they do a great job. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not a public hearing? Uh, Mr. Downer. Mayor Merkel, members of town council. My name is Richard Downer. We live at 815 Branch Drive, number 308. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Mr. Ashton aboard. He has the uh, fortune of heading one of the finest staffs in the state of Virginia. Uh, and I've been around here a long time <laughs> and seen a lot. Uh, and I know you'll do a wonderful job with it. Congratulations. Uh, and I would like to congratulate Mrs. Baker on her new home. Uh, <laughs> <I know that laughs> Do you know anything about that home, Mr. Downer? <laughs> Too much about it, I'm afraid. Uh, well, the anyway, innuendo. Anyway, actually. <laughs> Ms. Baker she's brought she's Mr. Downer's house. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just for the record. Don't uh, want there to be any rumors flying. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, actually, what I'm actually here about is the new AstroTurf field at uh, Brady Park. Unfortunately, we... we I wrote down the date wrong in my oh. calendar, and we walked up there uh, the afternoon after it was dedicated. But that is a real asset to the town, and it really looks nice. And it looks like the contractor did an excellent job all the way around. Now, we need to support the Parks and Rec Department with the proper kind of trash cans. Uh, now, I realized. One of the reasons the cans were all full the other day was because they had just been the event the day before. But uh, you, I, I've sent these to the former uh, town manager and public works director, but I'll send them again if we need to. Asheville, North Carolina 
has cans, and I've taken pictures of them, and it's two cans together, uh, a, a recycle can and a trash can, and it encourages people. I can tell you right now, talk with Public Works guys. you got to right up here at the top of this building, there is a blue can, and the blue can's all by itself. And guess what? Everything, 50% of what's in there at least is not recyclable, and the guys just throw it away. Or the gals just throw it away. So please take a look and support you know, financially <laughs> the Parks and Rec Department because they they run a wonderful operation up there. And we really need to do uh, a better job of making it easy for people to dispose of things uh, properly. Also, uh, and I warned Cindy I was going to come up here <laughs> beforehand. Mm -hmm. So, And also one of the things that always bothered me is we really need to – find one of the old golf carts over at the golf uh, course and give it to public uh, give it to the staff at the community center to let them go around easily at every morning and clean up around Brady Park and the outside of the building there are times when you go up there and it's for the activities during the week <coughs> particularly or the, or the weekend and it's just not very neat Okay. And, and that's what I would like to see and give them a way to do it and support them financially to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that's not a public hearing? And that does include our one general item about the food trucks. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak at this time? Mr. Knackman. Yes, sir. It's a general item, so this would be the time to speak on that. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good evening, Madam <laughs> Mayor and members of council. <laughs> time, time, you know, I, I go 24 hours a day. Uh, <laughs> my name is Arthur Knackman. I live at 866 Vine Street. I came down this evening to speak against the change uh, in the ordinance reflecting uh, food trucks. I. I think that in this particular area of the town, I think that this is not something that's warranted. I, I have seen, you know, uh, places where where it does exist in a very uh, compatible uh, situation in a, in office parks and industrial parks, but we're just moments away from redeveloping our downtown. Uh, I don't think this is in keeping with what we want to do. I think if a establishment wants to offer food to their patrons they do have an option it's called a kitchen and it would be inside and it would be just like all the other restaurants that we have in the downtown so I would ask that you vote against this resolution thank you thank you sir is there anyone else who would like to come forward And I asked for that point of clarification, Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, yeah, Steve Munn again from 814 Locust Street. Um, I live right across the street from the area that we're talking about, okay? And uh, I would just do a quick history. Two, three years ago, we went to put the temporary fire station in. And we had a big discussion like this. And one of the items I said, because the, the way we were going to return it was to as is at that time. And I said, please don't do that. It's a big parking lot, it collects trash, it does everything. Well, sure enough, three years later, after we moved the fire station, what have we done? We tore out all the utilities we put in there, we put all the parking that we put in there, we tore all of that stuff out, and we created another big gravel lot and a grass area that now somebody's gotta go mow because we didn't take the opportunity to improve the property. Now what we're talking about is we have a business that wants to come into town and it needs to operate like any other food service business in the town. We, that's the whole area where we're trying to develop, at least I think, as restaurants and taverns and pubs and those kinds of things so people have a place to go with their families and do that. This is not conducive across the street from our house to have food trucks that are parked out there with no restrictions, as it says in the discussion, that says instead of 21 hours, it's unlimited, unrestricted, you could have more than one truck, you know, and not to mention, we just got done talking about the trash cans. So where's all that trash going? It's going right in that lot, going right into the neighborhoods that are, that are family communities. 
that's not indicative of the town of Herndon. And I would strongly encourage you to vote no against this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on um, this item? Or I guess any item that's not a public hearing item, including the general item. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Andrew from the Aslan Beer Company who's proposing this. Sure, and you know, I want to clarify too, you can speak now if you like, but you also get an opportunity during the general portion as the applicant, doesn't he, or does he? Am I wrong? Never mind, I'm wrong, go ahead. Um, <laughs> That's why I ask questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I realize it's, it's gonna be tough to pass this today, but we're gonna work hard to get it passed. Um, to be clear, if it doesn't get passed, we do plan on having a food truck there every night of the week. So if it's us, a respectable town business that's gonna make sure it's clean or it's somewhere else um, just take that into consideration second thing um, we do plan on developing that that property um, we've spent a lot of money on the property we're spending a lot of money to turn the cleaners um, into a respectable um, town area and the last thing is um, food trucks food trucks drive economic development they're very progressive. Asheville, um, someone brought Asheville, making it a clean city. There's food trucks at nearly every brewery across that town. Um, I was just in San Diego. San Diego has 180 breweries, nearly as many as Virginia. Um, every um, brewery has a food truck, nearly. If it's a brew pub, they have a kitchen. We plan on having a kitchen. This is a temporary fix as we decide to develop the property. Um, I actually and personally invested in the town. I just bought a property on Vine Street and Main. So I want it to be clean. Um, we have a lot of money invested in the town. So don't think this is a quick fix. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. He's all in for the town. Move to town, business in the town. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that is not a public hearing item, that it does include general items, consent items, or anything else that you'd like to speak on? Yes, sir. Mr. Adams. Dale Adams at 1106 Iron Ridge Court. Uh, this is my first attempt at hearing what's going on with the food trucks, and I just look and what goes on on the streets in D.C. with the food trucks. I'm dead set against them being allowed in Herndon. Herndon is a place that we want to be as pristine as possible, that will invite everybody in at any time and give them the service that they deserve. Please vote against that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much. That does bring us to, um, well, before I move to the public hearing items, I do wanna clarify for anyone in the audience, um, we had several people talk about the consent agenda item, which is an initiating resolution about our metro station area. An initiating resolution, if that passes, simply sends that um, zoning ordinance text amendment idea to the uh, Planning Commission, which would hold work sessions and multiple public hearings on that item to make recommendations back to the Town Council. So it's certainly, there is plenty of opportunity to address the concerns I believe that were brought forward today and we are cognizant of that. Um, so moving on to our public hearing um, item, we just have one, it's Resolution 17 G69 to consider um, CPA number 1702 to establish a concept for a cycle track on the east side of Herndon Parkway, south of the WNOD, uh, regional park and to incorporate by reference the design concept for a cycle track report and so, su supporting documents prepared by um, AECOM. And we have Dana Heiberg for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, our brief staff report. Uh, this is again is CPA 1702, as you uh, mentioned. It is probably the most limited uh, plan amendment that. I've ever worked on and um, it might be one of the smaller ones that you'll ever see but it is significant for us um, the purpose of this plan amendment is to uh, establish a cycle track south of the WNOD we want to further the pur purpose of providing connectivity toward the Herndon transit oriented core 
Uh, and we're also looking to fulfill a grant mandate that we have from the Virginia Office of Intermodal Planning and Investment. You're familiar with the Metro Rail Station Area Plan. It was adopted back in 2012. It did establish a cycle track through the transit-oriented core, uh, but it did not cover areas north and east of the core. And uh, the map this here on the screen displays the uh, area that I'm referencing. Um, so that uh, the area that would be affected by this plan amendment is um, south of the WNOD trail, which you can see at the uh, upper part of the screen. And it extends along Herndon Parkway and down past Spring Street. And uh, down in the left corner of the screen, you can see where it uh, ends. And to the uh, to the east of this location would be the Herndon Transit Oriented Core, or, where again, we, do, we already have a cycle track designation. Uh, and then this particular property uh, that you're seeing at the left uh, lower corner of the screen is the Fairbrook property. And the Fairbrook property actually now has uh, a feature uh, with the application that's uh, active at this time. Uh, under the landmark alternate zoning district. And that feature uh, requires um, essentially a, a cycle track that matches the Herndon Transit Oriented Core. So in effect, we would see an extension of what you have in the Transit Oriented Core across the Fairbrook property, assuming they want to move forward as, as they are uh, showing every intent to do. And then, at that point, we would pick up the uh, the line that you see here, which is a, a more limited um, cycle track designation, not quite as uh, involved uh, or as extensive, I would say, as the um, the cycle track through the Herndon Transit Oriented Core, which you may recall is a full part of a full 30-foot streetscape. Uh, including all of the sidewalk and cycle track elements. Um, this is consistent with the town's master trails plan, which is part of the comprehensive plan, and uh, the, uh, the designation along the uh, lower, uh, I guess the lower right side of this map is the internodal trail designation along Herndon Parkway, and so this uh, Cycle track is consistent with that part of the plan. We, d we have some particular language. Uh, just a couple of additional points on this. Um, and we have some language to insert into the plan in order to reference the report uh, prepared on the cycle track. Um, I'm not going to read all that particular language, but that gives the, the particular citation of the documents. Um, and again, we want to do that at a couple of locations. So I've just uh, cited those specifically. Again, it calls this uh, cycle track as a general reference guide for enhancing pedestrian and bicycle connectivity between the Herndon Transit Oriented Core and the WNOD Regional Park. Um, we, we would be uh, uh, adopting by reference the, the supporting studies that had been prepared. Um, and that those are cited here, and I'm not going to read through all the particulars on this slide. Um, the conceptual dimensions per the report, I think, are of interest. Um, the, uh, they have a variable dimension on a, uh, a tree. Uh, sort of a, um, we typically think of it as a utility strip or a, a tree planting area. It generally serves as both. It's uh, typically covered in grass and provides areas to plant trees as well. Uh, that dimension they do uh, display in the report is variable. The cycle track is 8 to 12 foot in width. We have a foot of separation. We have the sidewalk. <coughs> at six foot in width, and that certainly meets minimum ADA requirements. And that gives us a toe in the 20 to 30 foot range. So uh, you're, 
your practical minimum total, if you will, if you have a five foot wide uh, tree planting strip uh, along with those other features, your typical width would be uh, 20 feet. And as a note on existing conditions, the typical width that we have on most of the properties along through that area, uh, if you look at the existing utility strip, the existing sidewalk, and the existing landscaped area before you get to the parking lot, if you will, moving in outboard from the edge of the street inboard to the property, uh, is about 30 feet. Um, and that kind of goes with the requirements that uh, live with the zoning districts that apply to those properties. Uh, now, that's not 100% on, on every single property. So there will, will have to be some flexibility and some engineering work uh, when we get into the details of that. And in reference to those details, implementation of this cycle track, we have um, planned to work with VDOT on the East Spring Street widening project to uh, accomplish most of this, hopefully all of this, um, but we'll have to see if we can, can get the full length of this built into that project. It would be a relatively minor, uh, it would be a significant piece of that project, but in the the scope of that very large project, uh, this is a fairly small item. Um, <clears throat> so the details and dimensions are gonna be subject to that engineering design of that project, um, but at least uh, the plan amendment provides that conceptual framework. And when all segments of the cycle track are complete, there will be a connection from the Metro Promenade along Hernan Parkway to the WNOD Trail so you have that uh, complete, complete pedestrian connection, which, which of course is such an important goal. Um, I think that concludes. I have one additional point. I did want to just mention a technical point, a uh, procedural point that um, per Virginia code, the governing body shall act within 90 days of the Planning Commission's recommending resolution. And so the Planning Commission recommended this on August 7th. And so you certainly have time uh, to consider this. Uh, and that concludes the presentation. Maybe I'll bring it back to the map and uh, be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Are there questions for staff about the cycle track? No? I guess we're pretty excited about the cycle track. Um, okay, so there are no questions of staff. Um, we will, uh, this is a public hearing. I should have already opened the public hearing. Um, so uh, we will call for comments from the audience. Um, you have up to three minutes to co make comments on the cycle track. State your name and address for the record. Uh, Mr. Downer. Madam Mayor, members of town council, I'll deliver 815. Branch Drive, number 308. Uh, just a couple of questions. First off, when it says cycle track, it sounds like it's a high speed mm -hmm. raceway. I assume it is not. Uh, it's strictly a bicycle access. Correct. Uh, we did visit Amsterdam uh, in Holland, and they have literally beautiful bike trails going both ways right adjacent to the right-of-way uh, with stop lights and every, I mean, when the, in the busy area, but it's very interesting what you can do with that if you've got the right-of-way to do it. Uh, and uh, Mr. Heiberg answered the question about what happens when you get to the bottom left mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. dots, uh, and that is to hopefully continue it on. But I would like to point out uh, that between dots five and six, well, first off, I need to say, I'm on the board of Next Stop Theater Company but I'm not here representing them. Uh, and I'm also uh, part of the ownership of 269, which is uh, Sunset Park Drive, which is uh, the uh, Industrial Strength Theater, also known as. Uh, but one of my concerns is that is the secondary exit to uh, that whole uh, business park. 
and hopefully it needs a name, by the way. I wish you would please name that street, that little intersection there, uh, something. Uh, but it, I hope they have dealt with that in their planning because that is not an insignificant amount of traffic that comes through there that feeds that park and will get even bigger when the, uh, if and when the hotel is built down on the remaining part of uh, that big grass area down there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there um, anyone else would like to come forward and speak um, on this item, the cycle track? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, is that Okay. <laughs> okay, I'll close the public hearing, move to council level for discussion and action. Uh, Madam, uh, Ms. Uh, Olam. Uh, Madam Mayor, I move approval of resolution 17-G-69. I'll second it. Okay, there's a motion on the floor made by Council Member Olam, seconded by Council Member McKenna. Correct. Discussion on the motion, Ms. Olam? Yes. Um, Thanks, Jeff, for an excellent presentation. This has been a long time in the works, and the individual that was concerned about the egress, there will be numerous egresses along that cycle track, and those things are being looked into. Um, if you're not familiar what a cycle track is, my son was discussing this me, with me about this just the other day. If you notice on Drainsville Road, there is a bike lane which is on the regular road. The cycle track takes it off of the road, but it will be separate from where the pedestrians walk. So you'll have a place, and uh, the place that I first got to run across this was in Stockholm, Sweden. And it was awesome because they had these cycle tracks everywhere. So you could be walking, but then, you know, to one side you had the bicycles, and they were very good at ringing the little bells, so you knew they were coming up, and, uh, you know, it worked great. And the people were safer because the Herndon Parkway, the traffic does move pretty fast. So it is a safer place uh, for people to be than a four-lane road like the Herndon Parkway for our bicyclists and that's where the metro is going to be but I totally support this and it's been a long time coming and it's just um, a continuation of what will be going on where the metro is and that'll take it all the way down to the WNOD thank you thank you other uh, discussion mr. McKenna yeah I want to thank staff uh, last week we did some hashing out in regards to some of the questions we had in regards to this particular um, cycle track and I think it's a, a great idea for several reasons. First of all, of course, with Metro coming, uh, a lot of people will be taking uh, bikes and also walking, um, and I think that'll be a nice, safe path for people to take uh, to the WNO Trail, and they can go uh, left into the downtown district without worrying about getting hit uh, by cars, and I think that's a great thing. Uh, the other thing, too, is I, I just think um, getting prepared for what's happening in town, um, you know, giving options for people to uh, have a safe place to go because of Metro, uh, it will help alleviate traffic because if we get this ahead of schedule versus having it happen all at the same time, a lot more people will have this as an option to get to the Metro from uh, the, I believe that is the east side of town working its way south. So uh, great job by staff. And um, again, thank you for a answering all our questions last week. It was definitely informative and I'm very excited about this. Thank you. Other comments from council? Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I, echo, um, I echo the comments of um, Council Member uh, Olam and McKenna. Um, uh, I've been reading uh, a lot of information about how to make um, public areas desirable in towns. Um, as you're aware, our society, people don't walk a lot outdoors. Um, and one of the arguments is that it's not pleasant. The same thing with the bicycles. If it's hard, if it's frightening, people won't do it. Um, well, people my age won't do it. <laughs> um, so I think having a beautiful, uh, safe, comfortable place to bike and to walk is, is key to making this a desirable place for uh, our citizens and residents to um, be outside, to keep in shape, and to alleviate some of our traffic um, issues. So. Thank you. Other comments? Mr. Davidson. 
This is um, one more step in our efforts to make um, Herndon a really multimodal town and be able to use bicycles not only for recreation and to um, uh, have pleasure rides uh, on the weekends, but actually use it for transportation purposes to get to the metro so that you can then travel to your ultimate destination on the metro. So this is a part of a transportation network that we're trying to uh, create here in Herndon, and it's multimodal in nature and um, is used more both for recreation and for as we uh, improve make these improvements transportation purposes okay. thank you uh, mr davidson did a good job of uh, summing up exactly what we're trying to do here so thank you sir um, if there are no other comments from council i will call the question on the motion which was made by ms olam seconded by mr mckenna all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed and that motion carries that brings us to our one and only general item, which is an initiating resolution, uh, 17G70 Zoda number 1703, to amend provisions within section 7880-4T, Mobile Food Unit Prepare Full Service, that's the, the official title there. Um, I will go ahead and open the public hearing and call on Lisa Gilleran for, this, for the staff report. Um, this, again, is an initiating resolution, so if it were to pass this evening, it would be referring it to the, pl the Planning Commission for further discussion and public hearings. Um, it says Lisa, but is it not Lisa? Oh. I'm okay. Just this out okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it changes up on me. No, I don't have a calendar. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the item you have before you this evening is an initiating resolution. It is an application. Often when you have initiating resolutions, they're um, brought to you by the staff. But in this case, we actually had a member of the public come in and request a change to the zoning ordinance. So this is an application. And the applicant is interested in changing the rules that currently um, restrict food trucks, or as we technically refer to them, the mobile food unit preparer full service. Um, our current ordinance restricts it to um, food trucks to only so many hours a week, an individual food truck. And the concept behind that was to allow various businesses, in fact, um, the applicant's business originally, as well as some offices in town, to be able to have a variety of food trucks on site, not all the time, but during key hours um, for the benefit of the employees or the, um, in the case of a retail, uh, the customers. And there were limitations when that was approved. One was the hours. Um, I think it's 21 hours. Any given food truck can be present on a site during a seven day period, basically a week. And there's also um, some limitations placed on what constitutes a legal food truck in the town. Now, the applicant is not looking to change anything concerning what constitutes a legal food truck. The um, preparer part of that term that we use, um, the long term instead of food trucks, that relates to the type of food truck. This type of food truck and the type that the um, applicant is interested in having is a food truck where they actually prepare the majority of the food in the truck. It has the three sinks that the health department requires and all that. So some people would say gourmet food truck or a uh, higher class food truck. You know, different people refer to it in different ways. So the applicant's not requesting a change to that, but they are requesting a change to allow a food truck that is owned and basically operated by the owner of the property to not have a time limitation on it. Um, the staff has reservations, concerns about that because through the years we've had several property owners, um, particularly in other parts of Eldon Street, come to the town and ask us if they could move a food truck onto their site and basically use one of their parking spaces to become a restaurant. And we've always said, no, it's, it's not allowed. And um, although we do allow food trucks um, now, we still do not allow that just moving it onto the site for a prolonged period of time, one particular one. 
And so the staff does have concerns. Um, we're, as I mentioned at the work session, we're happy to, to work with the applicant to find out if maybe there's some other type of business model that would work for them and if that includes maybe a more minor change to the food truck ordinance, um, staff might be able to support that and we would bring that back to you as an initiating resolution. But right now, uh, we think this is, is way too broad. Um, we aren't recommending approval so that we can start discussions with the Planning Commission because we really think that um, we're not at that point in the discussion. Uh, we definitely need to um, work more on what might be some appropriate solutions and that's probably not best to do when we've got the deadlines of public hearings and advertisements falling upon us that we do if we go ahead and move this to the Planning Commission. So the staff's asking to take a step back here, asking you to deny this particular uh, request and we will continue to work with the applicant and, and see if we can't figure out a way to help them try to achieve at least part of what they're trying to achieve. And that's the staff request. Okay, thank you. Are there questions for staff on this item? Um, I have a couple of questions, but I was going to let my colleagues go first. No. Um, so my, my first question, I think you already answered this, but I just want to clarify, we do currently allow food trucks under the, some circumstances on private property, but only up to 21 hours per any, week. Any given food truck. Um, okay. The, the concept was not to Part of the concept was mm -hmm. not to have somebody come and park a food right. truck. Uh, it does allow, the current ordinance does allow, say you have an office park, mm -hmm. uh, and we've had a few office parks take advantage of this already. Well, you could have, um, say, a variety of different food trucks visit that site throughout the week during the lunch hour to afford your tenants um, kind of a, almost a mini food truck rally or at least a different food truck every few days on the site. So it's, it's not just a matter of having one food truck sitting mm -hmm. there. Um, we believe that that can lead to some issues, not necessarily with this applicant, mm -hmm. but with some of the other requests um, we've had in the past, I, I think we would have seen issues with having a vehicle parked there for a long, long okay, time. So I just wanted to clarify that, because um, we, we had one speaker who was not in favor of allowing food trucks, but we already have an ordinance that allows them under these restrictions. Yes. Okay, and my other question was, if this um, were to be, you know, initiating resolution passed on to the Planning Commission, and if it were eventually passed, would this change be only for the property in question, or would it be a broader change in our this, zoning code? This request as it is written mm -hmm. would impact any of the zoning districts that are current that currently allow the food trucks so we would be going so it could potentially be widespread not it, it would oh, be okay it, it could very well be and one clarification um, the person who spoke mentioned Washington DC normally in Washington the food trucks park in the street the zoning ordinance currently requires the food trucks to be parked on private property when they're serving and um, this application does not change that request so we're not talking about food okay. trucks in the street here okay yes sir uh, I'm a big person in regards to precedent as well um, is there any place that you've seen in the Commonwealth where you've seen this happen and the reason why I bring it up for example in Vienna there's a restaurant called Maple Avenue uh, it's on uh, 123. They have a, a food truck, but they're not allowed to have that food truck on the establishment uh, because of the ordinance that's in place currently. Um, I've done some homework. I'm just wondering if you had uh, seen any precedent like that because uh, looking at this ordinance or the, the resolution in question, I didn't see anything in the state of uh, Virginia nor with the VML, so I was just curious. Um, I mean, different jurisdictions have different ways of regulating food trucks. Some of them don't allow them on private property. Some of them don't allow them in the street. Mm -hmm. um, when we did the original um, ordinance for food trucks, we surveyed several of the local jurisdictions 
And we, as the town, um, came down to it as looking at it as a temporary use. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why we have the limitation in the number of hours for any given food truck is that we want it to definitely be temporary and accessory to the primary use of the property. And I can remember the discussions, and I'm sure some of the members of the council do as well, um, where we've had to fine tune, you know, how do we describe that week period? How many hours should that be? Should it be 21? Should it be less? Should it be more? So we did, um, in the drafting of the original zoning ordinance text amendment, um, carefully vet uh, those issues. As to exactly, um, you know, have I seen this in other places where they just come and for the most part sit? Um, I I'm, can't say that I can point to one. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Friedrichs. I hope I turned this on. Um, so um, I'm familiar with um, places outside of the Commonwealth that um, have this on a permanent basis, but they tend to be parks that are devoted to lots of food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the person who, uh, the gentleman who was discussing the DC issue, the, the trucks that I'm familiar with in DC are not the nice, you know, trendy, fabulous ones. They're, they're kind of, um, not very attractive. I, I'm sensitive to this um, applicant's um, desire to um, provide himself with a kitchen while he's working through the stages of the um, of the building. But uh, given that we can't restrict this to just him, um, and there's no um, end time that I understand, um, I am concerned and. Um, I know a lot of other uh, restaurants in the area would um, take issue with it as well, and that is a concern. So that's not really a question, it's more of a comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, other questions, um, or I guess comments are appropriate because there's not a public hearing here. Okay. Other questions? Um, so I, I just wanna say that I know that the applicant that has brought this forward is um, an owner of a wildly popular business in Herndon that's moving to downtown who has grand plans for expansion. And um, if this is denied, um, I do trust that the staff will work with them and try to find a solution that helps get them over the hump and get help them meet their goals but while also meeting the goals of the downtown. Because I think this may just be one option that has some unintended consequences that I'm sure weren't realized when this question was asked. But I, I think that I don't ever say I speak for the council, but I, I think I can safely say the council is excited about this particular, you know, new project in downtown, and we want to um, do what we can to help make a suitable solution so that they can meet their goals and we can have an exciting brewery in downtown Herndon. So, well, the uh, applicant and I have a meeting arranged for Monday to okay. discuss their other zoning ordinance text amendment as well, which is on the consent agenda. But we will also be discussing okay. possible resolutions Great. to this as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Yeah, so as long as we're making comments, I would just, so I would add, uh, and I think we, I know we clarified mm -hmm. this, but this is really to send this to the Planning Commission. And I think given that we've certainly heard enough comments from the audience, uh, both from businesses and residents, that maybe this isn't in the sort of fighting shape we want, and to have staff not recommend it, just so you know, that's really unusual. Usually when staff brings it to this point, um, it is more likely that, that they would recommend it. So uh, given that, I, I do think, um, before we go through the steps of planning commission and then back to us, we really want to get it in that uh, the, kind of the right, um, a more refined place that we do feel more comfortable with than what I think it is today for the folks in the audience. And it sounds like you're already going to continue to work with, with the applicant, and that's great. Yep. And without the constraints of advertisements and timelines and things like that, so I think it could be more efficient. So uh, we look forward to seeing you guys back, hopefully in, in a few weeks or months to see what, what might be able to um, be done, assuming that the council's will is to follow the staff's uh, recommendation. Are there other questions before we entertain a motion? Nope. Okay, um, I will entertain a motion for um, item number 10. Madam Ms. Mayor, Owen. I move uh, denial of resolution 17G-70. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to deny um, the initiating resolution made by Council Member Olam, seconded by Mr. McKenna? That's correct. Okay, um, discussion on the motion. I will now make my comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think we have worked so hard to 
really revamp the downtown and make it this wonderful place that people want to come that I think this is going backwards um, if someone wanted to put a trailer in my neighborhood I would be having a heart attack and I to me that's kind of what a food truck would do in our little down this is our historic downtown so uh, I just I've been to a brewery in Fauquier County and yes they do have lots of food trucks there I basically go because I know a band that plays there and when they go play I go but it's just to me I would rather go be in a restaurant and have them serve me instead of having to go stand in line and schlep the stuff back in but that's just me and I just I don't think that's what we want in our downtown or at least that's not what I visualize and this individual that lives right across the street I, I know I've talked to some of the other folks down there and they were sort of horrified about the thought okay thank you uh, mr. McKenna yeah I I, um, I can empathize with the, the business I mean I've uh, done a few podcasts from there um, I definitely uh, am pro business and pro growth but um, there has to be some measure and after the meeting last week I looked through resolutions through Alexandria, Vienna, Clifton. I went through the VML. I asked for clarification. I even went to the town manager, or excuse me, town um, attorney, uh, just based on the language. And um, I, I think, like I said, the intent is good, but unfortunately, the way the language is really does bother me because it opens up Pandora's box. Because if you allow this to happen, it opens up the entire zoning area to you know what may come um, you, you know again it's uh, the uh, road paved with good intentions sometimes you know smacks you in the butt that's an original one from me um, <laughs> but I, I, I think it's you know it's a I can appreciate what they're trying to do but again be based on timelines based on precedent based on what the Commonwealth has um, you know I have to say no to this but at the same time I don't say no to what the idea is I think uh, um, we can work together to get something that makes sense, but I just don't think this makes sense on several fronts, and uh, I'm going to be um, uh, in so that's why I second it. I'm going for the, going for the, going for the denial. Thank you. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just want to make one other comment. I just want to clarify both for the residents and the business owners. Um, as we've mentioned, there is a food truck ordinance already on the books, right, because we, we do want to advocate for that, right? We do like the concept of that in small doses. So today it's already available to this applicant and any other business owner to have um, on their own property, right, to have on their property a food truck up to 21 hours a week, right? So us, even if we do deny this tonight, I just want to make sure folks recognize they still can, the applicant or any other business, um, be, it a, be it a food related business or not, can have a food truck on their private property for up to 21 hours a week. That's already on the books. So given that today this applicant, if they want to do it every day of the week, that's potentially three hours, because I know the applicant mentioned they're going to do this, they will have a food truck there most days. I know today the applicant's business is open, I think, four days a week, so maybe they're going to have it five hours a day for the four days a week they're open. I don't know exactly what their plan is as they develop the, the new property. Um, but I just want to make sure that's clear to folks. Even if we deny this tonight, you will uh, very likely still see a food truck at, at the applicant's business. It's not on a permanent basis. Okay. Right. So, okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments on uh, this item? Okay, so I'm going to clarify. The motion on the floor is to deny uh, resolution 17G70. So um, the motion is to deny. So those in favor that, pro that it not be forwarded to the Planning Commission will vote aye. It's confusing to vote yes when you are saying no to something. So I just want to clarify that um, because I have messed that up myself. So um, all those in favor, um, I'll call the question, all those in favor of denying the resolution uh, to the Planning Commission say aye. 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 And those opposed. Okay, that motion uh, does carry, and um, I look forward to hearing what um, happens between staff and the applicant. Uh, that leaves us with our consent agenda, which has several items, one of which is item number 16. We did receive some comments today, as well as some comments this evening that have been entered into the record. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. And that brings us, um, that concludes our agenda. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I move we adjourn. I'll second. second. Yep.
All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, and we stand adjourned at 8.35 p.m. Thank you, everyone.